Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Spencer Elmy, and I'm going to open it up today with a little uh, personal story. My grandfather's name was Lieutenant Colonel Leslie Spencer in the United States Air Force. He served throughout the Vietnam conflict, flying everything from B-52s to helicopters. After his career in Vietnam ended, he came home, flew for the CIA for a little bit, and then eventually settled into the Air National Guard, where he tragically died in an accident before I was born, so I never got to meet him. However, my memories and the stories my mom has told me about him have shaped my career and what I want to do through as being a naval aviator was his dream. I'm not the only person who has memories that are driving me through, as you're about to see through this little video clip. Okay, so this video is from uh, the pretty famous movie Saving Private Ryan, and it shows how even in pop culture the idea of uh, brave men and women who have gone through a lot, how memories can shape their life. And the idea that I've had on this can all be shaped down to one word, the word remembrance. So that idea is throughout life you have the, uh, this ability to remember things that happened to you in the past, whether or not they're super prevalent in every everyday life. And this idea has applied throughout the way that we treat our veterans once they return home as well. This was, said by several, this was said by a soldier once they returned home from the Vietnam conflict. And it shows how hurtful he felt that the way that people, that the civilians once he returned home treated him was. Like this, this is a man who went forward and sacrificed his free time and his ability to have a free will kind of to be in the military. And his friends sacrificed their lives to protect his country and, and the people who he came home to face the unjust spit and venom and foul words of hate who he's talking about. This hasn't always been the case. This picture is pretty famous. It's called The Kiss. It's of a sailor who just returned home after VE Day victory in Europe and World War II. And he's greeted in Times Square by a huge parade, lots of celebrations, and loving family as he returns home. This sailor is going to have a far easier time adjusting to civilian life because he has the support of his community and of his loved ones. This, on the other hand, is how we greeted uh, veterans returning home from the Vietnam conflict. This man is faced to look at the names on the veterans memorial all alone and be stuck all by himself with the memories of his brothers who he left behind in country. And this is really conducive to a destructive environment. So this idea of them being alone is really devastating, but it can really be illustrated very well by this one statistic. So as you can see, this little green quarter man in the corner represents the one half of a percent the, of the United States population that serves in the military. And that's totally okay that not a lot of us serve in the military. We have an all-volunteer force, and I feel that's what makes us great, is because the people who are in the military really want to be there. However, this is the 20% of suicides annually that are represented by veterans. So 20% of the people that kill themselves are veterans, and that's coming from only the half of the percent of the United States who actually serves in the military. So that is ridiculous. The amount of people from such a small group who kill themselves is not only a problem, it is a crisis and something that we need to be giving much more attention to and thinking about how to solve every day. And how I think we can start taking a step towards this is actually pretty simple. This is the uh, Memorial Day flyer that I found when just as soon as you type in Memorial Day, it's this. Uh, I think everybody's pretty aware. Memorial Day is a day that, as, that we have set aside for the sole purpose of saying, today we're gonna reflect and say thank you to the men and women who go forward every day, sack put their lives on the line to allow us to live freely and in peace. This does not reflect that. This reflects a day off saying we're gonna eat, drink, and barbecue, and it does not say once that there are veterans that we need to remember, and it only mentions Memorial Day in very small print all the way at the bottom. This is not only ridiculous from our standpoint in such a culture that's so militarily minded, but in the world. So that's directly contrasted by this. This is the English version of Memorial Day. It's called Remembrance Day, it's in November. This is clearly a much more somber image. It's of several soldiers walking across the background of poppies, which is the uh, image that they've chosen to represent this. They sell little poppies on that day that represent, and all the proceeds go to Veterans Affairs. This is really a much more somber and remembrance-filled event because as you can see, it's not focused on parties, it's focused on the men and women who died to keep Great Britain as great of a nation as it is for so long. So this is a poem 
about Remembrance Day. It's uh, very sad, actually. But the last line is the one that's most meaningful to me, this last little bit here. And it says, but why, mummy, are you crying so? Your tears are giving you pain. My tears are my fears for you, my child, for the world is forgetting again. And this whole poem is about a little girl asking her mom, why do we even bother to remember these men? Like, it's not important. Like, why do we have Remembrance Day? And this last bit is talking about how the mother is truly terrified that as they are forgetting the veterans, the world is that their civilization as they know it is going to fall apart. Because without the remembrance of the men and women who die to keep you there, you start taking your privileges for granted and you're not able to capitalize on them on every day. And this isn't alone. This is not the only danger. Taking for granted is not the only thing that can happen from a lack of remembrance. This quote, uh, commonly attributed to Churchill, but he actually didn't say it. This man said it first. He just stole it from a little bit. <laughs> says, uh, those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And that's something that's said a lot, especially right now, as we prepare to go back into Iraq with the rise of ISIS right after we've kind of made a military withdrawal. Um, it's the idea that if you don't remember the lessons that these veterans have to tell you every day, and you don't remember their experiences and the pure human cost that conflicts have, then you're, gonna, then you're doomed to go back and make the same mistakes over and over and over again and create the same level of suicide rate amongst your veterans once they return home. So that was pretty depressing overall. I'm here to end on a happier note that this isn't something that is not being completely ignored. There are some great organizations, as shown here, and there's many more, who are out there doing their best to solve this issue. Uh, Wounded Warrior Project is a project that, I, that uh, addresses the issue, especially in modern warfare, of uh, soldiers who lose limbs due to IEDs. They help them with emotional counseling for the PTSD that goes along with that, as well as getting the prosthetic legs if they're a little bit short on money to purchase that for, so they can function as a positive member of society every day, fully mobile. Uh, Team Rubicon is a great organization I found out about recently. They help get veterans jobs and ways to positively influence their society once they return home, which is truly what they want to do is they volunteer to help people. So once they come home, Team Rubicon allows them to continue helping their community through non-military means. Uh, this last one is the Travis Mannion Foundation. It's a way that veterans who return home can help families of those who were, they left behind in country. And they take the veterans who just recently returned home and introduce them to families who have lost loved ones in conflict and help them rebuild their, that family's life. So as we can see here, it's, this isn't an issue that's being completely ignored. But we as citizens can do so much more and not just rely on these organizations, just purely by remembering veterans and saying thank you every day. Thank you very much.